There we go. All right, well, thanks for the introduction. I'm excited to tell you about a little of the work that we're doing using deep learning uh, for pre-processing and 3D segmentation of aortic 40 flow MRI in Dr. Markle's lab. Uh, so just as a little bit of background, I think a lot of us are familiar with 40 flow MRI, but it gives us a spatio-temporally resolved velocity information uh, for each patient that we scan. And this allows us to derive some patient-specific hemodynamic metrics. And one of the challenges of the 40 flow MRI, I think a lot of people are aware of, is that the workflow can be both time consuming and cumbersome and require some training to get good at. Uh, so uh, here's an example of what our data can look like after we do our pre-processing and segmentation. And just to quickly review the workflow that we typically go through, and Oliver's just done a nice job of doing this, uh, we start with our data off the scanner and we have a magnitude as well as three velocity directions. Uh, and this shows just one slice that's temporally resolved here. After that, we do an eddy current correction. For, so for our data, we use a static, we try to get a mask of static tissue, and then we use that to correct the background phase. I'll talk a little bit more about this in a second. And we get something that looks like this for a single velocity direction. And we do this for every velocity direction. Uh, next, we apply a, a denoising filter to get rid of noise in the background. And then third, we correct for aliasing, and you can see that there were some aliased voxels in the, oh, I don't know if that works, oops, this way, some aliased voxels here that were corrected there. Um, and then finally, we can do a 3D segmentation. I know this is every graduate student's favorite part. Uh, so this is a little bit of effort manually uh, right now. And so what we were asking is, then we can get to analysis. So our question has been, this takes about 15 minutes to do for an experienced observer, and we're wondering, can we automate this? So the cohort that we're using to try to do this is a pediatric cohort. It's 210 pediatric patients. Um, and you can see the breakdown here. They all had a pretty standard 40 flow acquisition at 1.5 Tesla on Siemens scanners. And all of these have been generated, all of these have generated reference data. So every subject has been manually pre-processed in the way that I just described and also manually segmented in three dimensions. Uh, so the first correction that we went through again is eddy current correction. And for this, we find a static tissue mask by looking at the standard deviation of the velocity. And so areas with low center deviation are thresholded, and those are static tissue, and we do a manual correction. And we look at each slice separately. So after this, we fit a plane to our static tissue mask uh, phase and use this to correct the background phase. Uh, we do something similar for denoising, except for we're looking for voxels that have a very high standard deviation of the noise. And we can find a similar mask. This example here is a static tissue mask, but we get a similar one for the noise. Uh, for the anti-aliasing, uh, we know that the velocity is encoded as a phase between minus pi and pi, and we must choose a velocity encoding sensitivities or a VANC prior to the scan based on anticipated maximum velocity. Uh, so any velocity that exceeds this chosen value will alias, and we can see an example here on the left of an alias data set. Uh, so the, our conventional algorithm looks for discontinuities in each velocity direction and corrects where jumps occur. Uh, so the gold standard here is that we're able to simulate aliasing by artificially lowering the VANC in data sets after we've acquired them uh, in data sets that don't have any aliasing. And you can see here that our conventional algorithm does a reasonable job of correcting the aliasing but misses a few voxels in the jet of the ascending aorta. Uh, for 3D segmentation, we calculate a 3D uh, MR phase contrast angiogram, and this is a weighted combination of the magnitude and velocity data. And we can use this uh, to manually segment after that. And we start with a threshold and then manually correct it from there. And over 40 subjects, uh, it takes me around 10 minutes and 30 seconds uh, to do uh, each segmentation. Uh, so we're using a single architecture for our convolutional neural network. And we're doing four separate networks for this, one for each of the processing steps. And this is a 3D UNet with dense net layers substituted for the original convolutional layers. And our loss function is a cross entropy plus a dice loss. Uh, so each one of these tasks is essentially doing some type of segmentation or categorization of voxels. Uh, so we use 100 data sets for training, 10 for validation, and 100 for testing. And this is on an NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti. Uh, so it results from the eddy current and noise correction. Uh, we use a dice score to compare the masks that we find uh, for eddy current, for the static tissue masking and the noise voxels. And a dice varies from zero with no agreement between the masks and one perfect agreement between the masks. And we find the eddy current, we have a 0 0.91, and noise masking, we have a 0 0.93 over our 100 testing subjects. 
And each of these networks takes about six hours to tra train for this cohort and about one second to run for each of the networks. We can see here in yellow the eddy current mask example and the noise mask in blue for on the left a manually thresholded version and on the right what are the convolutional neural network outputs. Uh, for velocity anti-aliasing, we quantified the performance by looking at the number of aliased voxels detected. We see that we, with the conventional algorithm, we detect around 729, as opposed to the convolutional neural network, which detects almost 1,400 per data set on average. And this depends on how alias a data set is. The training here takes about 26 hours, and the testing is about 30 seconds per subject. We see uncorrected data here. There's heavy aliasing in the ascending aorta. We can see that the conventional algorithm does an incomplete correction, and we can see that the convolutional neural network does a much better job inside the lumen of the aorta. Uh, so more recent work here is focused on expanding this cohort to adult patients as well. Uh, so here we looked at 664 unique subjects and found 304 with no aliasing for tra training and testing. Uh, so just as one example here, so we, we trained this network again for this larger cohort. Uh, and we can see that the, with, if we start with a bank of 150, uh, we can actually reduce that to 60, and we see that we've now heavily aliased our data set. And then we can compare the performance of the, con the cur cur conventional algorithm with the convolutional neural network, and we can see that we have much better performance with the CNN. Uh, so the last step is segmentation, and you'll hear more about this in the next presentation, but I'll give some results for this cohort. We have a dice score of 0 0.95 on average for this 100 testing cohorts. And if we measure diameters in the ascending arch and descending aorta, we find that there's very good correlation if we measure on either the manual or the CNN derived segmentations. The training time is around six hours for this, and testing it takes about one second per subject. So overall, we take our 40 flow data uh, and we unprocess 40 flow data, and we send it to four separate convolutional neural, neural networks, as shown in this diagram, uh, to obtain fully processed 40 flow data, as well as a three-dimensional segmentation. And we can see that the voxel-wise receiver operator curve shows an extraordinarily high area under the curve for each one of these steps. Uh, so in conclusion, we trained four separate convolutional neural networks to perform aorta 40 flow preprocessing and 3D segmentation. It's a rapid implementation, so it takes about 30 seconds on a computer with a GPU. And it's automatic. It requires no user interactions once you've started the pipeline. Uh, so thanks for your attention, and I'd like to acknowledge all the help I've gotten at Northwestern.